Hey there, Chad here. Thanks for joining me. This is Astrox Imperium, and this is my third episode on how to play the game if you're new to it. Uh, the game has gotten some recent attention by a couple of uh, influencers, and it's a very well put together early access game. It's been in development for seven years, and we're going to look at some of the interface when playing. So we've talked about things inside the station in the previous episode, and in this one, I want to exit the station and talk about how you move around in the world. All right, so here's our ship, and uh, what we'll do is we're just going to undock. So we'll click on a couple of places here. We could click on dock here, or we can click on the station name, and that'll do it. And there we are. We're out in the world. Now, going to show some tips as well and my very first tip is that at the very bottom of the screen to take your mouse all the way to the bottom there is a quick bar the quick bar has a whole lot of features on it the one I use the most is this first one and that opens all my panels instead of having to go and click each of the arrows or press the corresponding key to them that's all you have to do you can also close them all if you wish with the next item uh, and of course you can float over these and it will show you what each one does um, but in general that's what I like to use it for right there. Now currently I'm configured for mining. I have the two ore harvesters and I have not done the um, I have not done all the tutorials in this one. I did do the mining tutorial just to kind of push through. That's like the first one. It's attached to the story. You don't really have a choice there. So the second thing you're going to want to do anytime you're out in the world, and you can tell that I'm not in that mode because of the color of the skybox, uh, but also there's no icons. There are no icons up here. I'm going to hit space, and that puts on my tactical sensors. The tactical sensor shows you anything that's an item in the world, uh, and that would be anything that's not a background. So this big, big rock here, that is not an asteroid I can touch. That is in the background, and I would assume if I fly at it for an hour, I will be no closer to it. It's just graphics. These are asteroids that are mineable. I could go to those. And then we have a lot of other symbols, and let's talk about some of those real quick. Now, anytime you click on something, it targets it. It puts it over here in my targeting, and I can target up to four items at once. Let's move this down a little bit to give us some space. Um, the when I when I target it, it will eventually scan it, and then once it's 100%, it will tell me a distance and what it is. Puts it up here. Now I can have up to four things target it. Let's look at our station that we're close to. We already know about that station, so it pops up immediately. And let's look at a warp gate. Actually, I think we can click that. Yeah, that's like the sun, or that could be a planet or something. I'm not sure. We'd have to go way out there. As you can see, it's going to scan very, very slowly. Let's uh, let's look at the station. Oh, I'm already at my four. So even though this isn't complete yet, it takes up a slot. I can't use it. So I'm going to right-click that. It will go away. I'm going to click on this one. And in just a few seconds, it will pop up that it's a station. I think that's the um, finance station. Yeah, Lamasu Financial. So now I have four items in my my targeting right now. I can't select anything else. Okay, so what do you do if you want to look at other things? Well, the easiest way to stop targeting something is to come over here and right click on it. You can also click this X and that will untarget something, but just a right click on the image takes it away. Now, for these items, um, asteroids are not considered a permanent item, but structures are permanent. And anything that's permanent, when you right click on it, it will unhighlight it, but it remembers it. Okay, so it's still here. And the same is true for if I click this X over here. Clicking the X, you'll notice that Biomate's still there and is still there. I can now go and click on some other thing. I'm going to click on this warp gate. Uh, we'll click on this warp gate. If I can isolate it, we'll try to get that station. I don't think I can. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get it. Uh, oh, and, and so now I've double-clicked it, it thinks. So it's going to move me to it. It thinks I'm wanting to go to it. In order to stop your autopilot, when you do something like that, you first thing you could do is you could, you could kill it by right-clicking on it. And my speed is now dropped well off. The other thing you can do, uh, you can 
manually control your autopilot with the E key by default. E will turn it on, E will turn it off. That's important to know. So right now I have four items that I've identified in this uh, in this sector. I want to and if I want to identify everything that's not an asteroid. So I'm going to continue to do this. Again, the closer I am to something, the more likely it is to, uh, or the faster it will scan. And there are some things that are not clickable, like these. Again, these are background graphics. This is background graphics, but these are or asteroids that we could hit. Okay, so this is a warp gate to a sector called Starfort Ramos. Uh, warp gates look like this. We're going to go ahead and close those and we will close the different buildings that we've opened. And again, you'll notice that they just stay in here. They're sorted by name. I can sort these different ways and I like to sort them by distance. So I'm going to click distance and it says now sorting by distance. And you'll notice that the closest, 2,200 meters, things that are a little further away, 7,000 meters. And of course, when I click it, it is going to start going to it. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit E to disable autopilot. All right, so when I right click these to make them go away, they're no longer selected, but you will see that it actually holds the name next to them. It will maintain that for now. Uh, that's how I can tell what I have or haven't selected or, or identified yet. So I'm going to go around and see what else there is. There should be six stations and I think five warp gates. I don't remember for sure, but if we hit M, one, two, three, four, five, six, six warp gates. So there's still one more out there that I haven't scanned yet. There it is. And I've got two items there, so that'll get that, and that'll get that. And you might be saying to yourself, wow, that's a lot of clicking. Is there an, an easier way to do this? Yes, there is. There's a much easier way to do this, and I'm going to demonstrate that here in a minute. But as you see, those are popping up. And then I'm going to just close those out. So it looks like I have all six and all six. Yeah, so I... Uh, might not have a whole lot of reason to to demonstrate this but this guy right here is an active I'm sorry it's it's a passive scan that you can activate by clicking it so if I click on that I want to see um, how do I get rid of oh when something is not currently targeted if I click it it will disappear okay so so the first time so this is a warp gate Felishar if I click that X or if I right click it, it will just close it. It's down here. If I right click it again, it won't do anything. But if I click that X while it is minimized, it will go away. And now if we find that again, it won't have a label next to it. If I can find it. Oh, actually it does still have a label next to it, but it's not there. Um, Clicking on it, it will rescan it. There it is over there. I can right click on it and tell it to stop scanning. Now, I know the name of it because it was in my database before, but it is gone now. But what I can do is I can do this passive scan. You saw a little pulse go out, hopefully. It was very faint, it's not something you really notice. But it should go out there and find that. The problem is it'll find anything. Um, let's go ahead and click that and go towards it. Uh, can I get rid of Proctors? I got rid of Proctors. So this one I had already eliminated from my uh, my view. So what we would kind of want to see, I'm going to stop before I get to here. I want to get kind of close to this and then we will kill it there and then we're going to hit the passive and there was that little pulse and there it found uh, it found an asteroid and it found another asteroid and it found another asteroid and another one and now it's out of things to uh, it, I was out of targets so it may still be moving through the 
the system, but I'm not sure if I'll see any more pop up. So when you go to a system for the first time, that can be really useful. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go into the Fellashar system here. You can use Afterburner by holding down Shift, and you can use Auto Afterburner by hitting con uh, Caps Lock. Um, you won't, by default, jump through gates automatically. You can change that, and I will show that to you a little later in this video. But for now, we're going to hit Activate Warp, and we're going to go through a warp gate. It takes a few seconds. Up here, it will tell you how long it takes, and there we are. And the security here is 9.7, so this is a very secure system as well. Okay, so we can see there's a warp gate here, there's a warp gate here, here's a station. Big asteroid right next to us, another warp gate, the one we just came through. So this one will go to uh, uh, Starcross Void. I'm going to use the passive to see what all I can identify here. And then as things pop up, I'm going to close them to see if it will continue to identify new things. But we're just sitting still now, and there's the first one. So it found the Stargate that we're right next to. And there it found an asteroid. And there's probably a limit to how far out it will reach. I might have reached that limit already. So let's fly towards one of these. We'll go towards this one, double clicking it. So one click, it identified it and it started to try to uh, scan it. And double clicking it, it moved me towards it. This one I can just click once and it will try to identify it. Okay, so Equalis Ball. We'll right click here and Beacon Spider. Okay, so I'm going to manually fly. I never manually fly, but for right now, what I want to do, I'm going to turn left. I'm going to go towards this station over here. Now, this is a station, and you might see this, and you're like, oh, that's a structure. What is that? We'll talk about those in a minute, but there are structures that aren't stations that are in zones. This one looks like a pow power charging station, so let's do another passive. Really just kind of want to demonstrate how the passive works and ways you can use it to improve your gameplay without having to go click crazy. All right, so it identified something and it's another asteroid. Interesting. I'm starting to wonder if I might have a setting wrong because this feels like it's really close. That feels like it's really close. I would think it would find those and it's not. I'm going to try this one more time, and then I'll show you the settings for it. Also entirely possible, it just simply isn't working the way we want it to work right now. Uh, I could be doing something wrong. I don't think I am. Should be picking some of these things up, but okay. Nonetheless, could be a little bug going on right now, totally possible. Um, but how do we get it to not just pull in everything in the universe when we when we use it? Now in the in the Starcross Void uh, Void Starcross system, the first time I used it, it just like kept loading stuff. I got like 20 asteroids and just kept going and going. You can click this last guy here. This last guy is the passive scam options, and when we click that, it uh, tells us what it will try to identify. So this first button tells it to turn everything on. We can also tell it turn everything off. Um, toggle apply filter to band box. I'm not entirely sure what that does. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that one so much right now. And then this one tells it to rescan uh, everything. I use. You want to be careful with that one. Not something you want to use a lot. But let's go ahead and rerun the passive and see what it does now that we've kind of touched some of those things. It really doesn't look like it's um, finding the stuff. So we'll just click on that once. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty close. It's scanning really quickly. It should have found it. 2,000 meters. Definitely should have found that. Skate over here. 
So long story short, when it does work properly, it will scan things for you as you enter into zones, and that's very helpful. OK. Your option outside of that, though, is to just click on them. So we've got many of those are identified at this point. If we want to see if we've got them all, we can go to the map. And we can roll over what we are on, and we can see that there are four warp gates and one station. So I've identified three warp gates and one station. So one warp gate to go. Oh, I'm sorry, I do have all four. There it is, four warp gates, one station. OK, so these other structures, if I click on that, it will identify it. And it should be getting this with the passive scan. That's what this guy here is toggle structures on and off. Um, so clicking on it, though, it identified it as a public energy generator. So for I can pay some credits to recharge my energy. Now, this ship doesn't use enough energy for it to be a factor, but you can have larger ships that use a lot of energy and want to go in there and use it to recharge everything. Uh, it's just one of the things you can use. The other thing that can happen uh, some of these will be like housing facilities, and some of them be gun platforms, like turret, turrets and stuff like that. You can go to those, and they can give missions. Uh, I've done a few of the missions. They are kind of run-of-the-mill. I don't think it's anything super special, but it can be with a faction that's not necessarily predominant in the segment, uh, in the sector when you do that. Here's another one of the energy. Click on that. And I just like to identify everything that's in a sector so I know what's what's there, what I can use. There's not a whole lot more to identify in this one. OK. So the security patrol station. Let's go ahead and visit that. And I could just double click it. And what it would do is it'll, it'll fly to it, and then it will stop. But if I go up here and look at autopilot, there's a few items here. This first item is to toggle, toggle it on or off, same as the E key. This is to do some uh, auto targeting. This one will tell it to auto dock. I'm going to go ahead and click that to turn it on. So when I go to a station, I will auto dock with the station if I'm using autopilot. The next one is to do the same with warp gates. Initially, I leave this off. Um, but we're going to go ahead and turn it on to, to watch how it works. And then this one is uh, a sense. Uh, this will turn on your passive sensor anytime you enter a segment, uh, a sector. Let's go ahead and turn that on for now, and let's see how it might maybe works a little different when we go into. Let's go into Dog Star Prime next. But first, we'll demonstrate the auto docking by flying to Astrox Security Patrol. Again, afterburner. I can hold down the shift, and I nearly triple my small, I double my speed. And there it auto docked for me. I didn't have to click on the dock button. Generally, we would want to visit the market, see what's going on here. Take a look at any items that are at super discount, 50% reduction, that's not bad. And some of these we might see some remote prices now because we've been to a couple of stations, although not really seeing that just yet. There we go. So Polymer is at a 30% reduction, but that's actually about the same price it was back in the other uh, location. So not something we could buy and sell because we we're going to be selling it for close to nine as opposed to buying it at five, uh, 40. Well, let's go ahead and move on. Oh, real quick, we'll just take a quick look at missions. So kill four raiders. Um, this is a very attainable mission is something we can do at this point. It says level 10. I'm not quite sure how the levels work for that. We're going to go ahead and skip the missions for now, though. And we'll go ahead and leave, demonstrate a couple of the other aspects of the interface. So let's go to another sector. We talked about Dog Star Prime. So I can click here and click it a second time. Actually, I have to double click it because I changed that setting in extras to double click to autopilot. And 
and there we go. You'll notice it automatically warped me. Now I'm thinking maybe the previous one auto warped me too. I can't quite remember. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much, but there we are. Now we have the auto scan turned on, so I'm curious to see what happens differently, if anything, this time. There we go. It found the gate that we just left. It's right behind us. So let's give it a minute and see what else it finds. We'll fast forward through here. All right, it doesn't seem to be finding anything, so let's just move on. Gradient ore. So this is not the cheapest level ore. We're going to go ahead and do some mining here real quick, just for fun. Just kind of demonstrate a couple of more features here. So this is the rock that we're going to hit. And then I'm going to turn on my harvesters. And as it cycles, it will hit it and it will load it into our cargo hold. Now, each hit will reduce the size of the asteroid. If it gets down to zero, it will disappear entirely. There is a tip on the, uh, the wiki for the game that says that if you leave part of an asteroid, it will grow back faster than if you completely remove the asteroid. So that's something to consider. I do tend to try to leave them, but you'll notice that it does shrink in size each time it's hit, just a little bit. See it kind of jerking. If we look at it from this perspective, a little more obvious. And if we roll over the gradient here, it will tell us that its size is 1.1, so it's a little bigger than the atomite. Uh, and when we refine it, it goes to water, carbon, oxygen, salt crystal, hydrogen, and magnetic quartz. So those are its constituent parts. If we put it in a refiner, a refinery, that's what it will break it down to. And we can use those parts to create other goods. Now, interestingly enough, now that I'm close to this rock, the, uh, the passive has found other asteroids. I typically go to the settings and turn off the resources because I can see those the easiest, right? Um, those are easy to find. I don't really have a problem with those. So I, I do turn, turn that off and I allow it to try to track the other stuff. And we have raiders incoming. There are four raiders there and I am not really equipped to do anything with raiders as I have harvesters on. So we're going to go ahead and leave. We're going to go back the way we came. I don't think they could do us much damage if we click on them. They're way far away. It's taken a while. But we're going to go ahead and bug out while we can. Uh, you can click on these. You can also hit one and two on your keyboard. The, uh, the slots are lined up with your numbers. But we're going to go back to Felishar. Here is the guy that's the one that we highlighted. He's coming after us. He is uh, he's with the Alpha faction, um, but he's a raider, and he's in a recon. I think that's how you read that. It's possible he's in an Alpha-style ship that's a recon, and we would you know, potentially go look that up and see what it means. Once we're to the gate, though, I have not seen where they will follow you through. So we're in good shape there. Let's see, are there other things on here? Yeah, there is one other thing I want to show you. So we want to go back to Void Star Cross. What we can do is hit Map, and on the map we can click that. And I can double click it, which is what I just did, and you'll notice it says GPS is now active. And over here, this is our GPS system. The first one opens the map for us if we want to. Hit M, it's the same as clicking that. But now that I, because I had double clicked it in here and it started moving towards it. This guy highlighted it and that's what activates your GPS. And there he goes. This last one allows you to add a book bookmark to the map if you need to do so. Uh, I have bookmarked a couple of like asteroid fields that I wanted to make sure I knew where they were. Asteroid fields can disappear, it's something to be aware of, but often they do not. And I have maximum targets. So let's close some of those out and click this. Okay, now I know that I had not identified the medical center and all that when we first came in here, so I'm pretty sure that was all from the passive. So it does seem to be working at this point. 
what's not working, and I have not figured this out yet, is once in a while it doesn't auto warp. Like right now, we have it set here, but it's not doing it. So we're gonna have to click here and we will do our warp. Again, a couple of little bugs like that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The, the good news is none of it is catastrophic or um, fatal to, to the gameplay so far. Not, none that I've run into. I would prefer those things work cleanly and, and exactly the same way every time, but um, it isn't, for me, it isn't a deal breaker. The game is in active development. My understanding is the developer releases updates about quarterly significant updates quarterly it might uh was unclear if there are interstitial patches that get done i would kind of assume there are but uh i don't i don't want to say that with any certainty i would think if there's a real bug that the bugs are getting addressed didn't see a lot of complaints about bugs on the tech forums which is kind of cool uh and frankly better than some AAA games that i've seen so there you have it I think that's the basics of, let's actually one more thing we'll do here. Um, I just hit E to kill my autopilot. I can right click on this and uh, when I right click, it doesn't always hold it. It sometimes goes away, but eventually it will hold this. I can inspect something very closely. Oh, that's very interesting. So that's apparently what is technically the, the center. I can also, kill it here and you notice it took it out of my um, my list I don't necessarily want to do that so we'll click it and it's back and let's go ahead and dock with it so I'll double click and we'll start moving towards it and in we go I'm gonna go to the market I have no idea what this sells for you know what let's refine it we can, we can see what we'd be able to sell it for. We'd be able to sell it for 1600. I'm gonna cancel that and we're gonna go to the refinery, demonstrate that function real quick. So I just literally move this over here and I hit activate. And there you go, it starts chunking away at it. Each cycle does one rock. It's costing me a little bit of money. So far it's cost $23 credits. So not gonna be a money problem with this. We can go do other things and it will continue to run. Go to the university. I wanna, I wanna get the salvager um, as a prospector. One of the things I wanna be able to do is collect junk out of space. So we'll do that. We can go to the market and see if we can find any salvagers. We could only use a level one salvager right now, and there aren't any available in this particular market. Here's a piece of junk though. If you look, here's all the things it refines to. So there's a whole lot of material pieces that it can be broken down into, and that's good to know. There's um, junk, there's also scrap. Scrap is a little different, it has a different footprint for what it can be broken down into. Uh, so do keep that in mind. The items that say dock after it, those are blueprints. So we have a few here. I have some garbage on my mouse pad. Let's get rid of that. Um, I wanna clear that search. You could highlight it. The easiest way to do it is just to go to all. Uh, but what I wanna do is go to dock. And there we have it. Consumables like missiles and ammunition, those might be good ones to pick up and you'll notice they're not terribly expensive. I think things like electric switch become important because you're gonna have to have these to build larger components, to build larger components, to build the major components. So uh, just keep that in mind that there's a staged approach to how you might end up building something. I think that's going to do it for this particular episode. Let's go, ah, yes, let's finish up with the refinery. So it is done. Um, now I can't do like a drag and get a box to highlight all these, but what I can do is click the first one, hold down shift and click the last one. That will select them all and then I can drag them over here. So you'll notice um, that ore was taken up well over 100, I think it was 150 spots here in my cargo bay and the pieces it broke down into 
very much smaller than that. For fun, let's see how much we sell all of this for. Now, uh, I'm going to sell it regardless of if it would have, uh, um, regardless of if it's selling at the station or not. By putting it all together, it's only going to give me 808 credits for it, which is well below what I would have been getting for the actual ore itself. That's something to keep in mind. The physical ore was worth a lot more. Yeah, the carbon I'm only going to get 66 bucks for. 165. I think the magnetic quartz is probably one of the higher end items. 280. Yeah. So nowhere near what I would have gotten for just selling the actual raw ore. Um, I mean, I have to assume that's intentional. I'm not quite sure why. Generally, if you're going to refine something, you're going to get more money for it afterwards, right? That makes the most sense. Uh, so just one more example of how the economics don't necessarily work the way you might think or like, but it does work. So there you have it. In the next episode, we will start doing some trading and we will demonstrate how you can very quickly make a lot of money in this game in the campaign mode, just doing some simple trading. Until then, though, thank you for your time. And until next time, fair travels.